So, molecular compounds, not ionic compounds. That was chapter 8. This is chapter 9. So, to start this off, okay, molecular compounds are usually nonmetals, all nonmetals. So, I'm going to start this off with hydrogen. Hydrogen actually forms a molecule, an H2 molecule. So, it is two hydrogen atoms. Each hydrogen atom has one valence electron, okay? So I've got two hydrogen atoms, each with a valence electron. Hydrogen, as a nonmetal, likes to actually steal electrons from things. It's highly electronegative. So if you pair hydrogen with a metal, it'll just steal an electron and become an ion. But that's not the case here. If you pair hydrogen with another hydrogen, do you think hydrogen can steal an electron from another hydrogen? They're going to fight yeah. over it. No, they're going to fight over it. Okay? They're literally going to fight over their electrons. So even if one does manage to steal it, the other one's going to steal its electron. They're both going to steal from each other. So electrons are kind of jumping around like crazy. Um, so what actually happens instead, since they fight over it, they end up sharing them. Okay? How do they they are both trying to steal it, and because they both are trying to steal it, the electrons actually start going around both atoms, and it's a constant state of going back and forth. Okay? So sharing is not quite so kind. It's more like they're constantly stealing and neither of them can win. So they're sharing it. <laughs> okay? Um, so this is the Lewis dot structure of it. Two hydrogen atoms, they are actually sharing two electrons between them. So when we draw our Lewis dot structures for this, for these molecules, you will have two electrons in between two atoms, and those are the two electrons that are being shared between them. Okay? Here's another way to kind of draw that. And this is always about nonmetals. It's nonmetals bonding to form compounds. Their valence shells are going to overlap, and these valence electrons are going to be shared between these, elect these atoms, okay? We call this a molecule. It's a group that is sharing electrons, and they are being bonded together this way. Now, this static image here does not really do this justice. So let me draw a little bit on here. Okay, I've got a green electron on this atom here. So this green electron normally just goes around this atom, okay? But the other one tries to steal it. So that electron goes around that one. And then it steals it back, and it goes back around this one. And then it goes back around this one. And then eventually it starts going around both of them, right? It is literally going around and around both of them. We also have that blue electron. Okay, so there's a blue electron there. That is going normally around this guy, but then it gets stolen by this guy, and then it starts going around both and both of them. So these electrons are going around and around and around both atoms simultaneously, forming this... It's hard to kind of draw here, but you form this orbital that goes around both atoms at the same time. Okay? This is the strongest type of bond. And the reason it is the strongest, it's not just, hey, one stole an electron, the other's lost one, so now they're attracted to each other, so they stick together. This is literally fusing these two atoms together to make one thing, to make one molecule. Like, they are having their electron energy levels merge into one energy level. So you have this one energy level that goes around two atoms. And it is extremely hard to rip these atoms apart once they form a molecule. It's really easy to take the molecules and another molecule and pull them apart because they're not bonded, but within the molecule, it's hard to pull those atoms apart. Yes? Yeah, go ahead. Okay? So this is called a covalent bond. I sometimes call it a molecular bond, but I'll call it a covalent bond. I'll also call it a molecule Right? So there's a couple of different terms that are kind of interchangeable here. The sharing of electrons, that's what I mean by a covalent bond. Now, there are several atoms, or excuse me, several elements that will do this. Um, if it is a molecule that only has two atoms, we call it a diatomic molecule. 
Di means two. Atoms mean atom, atomic. So two atoms. Um, this is the simplest kind. There are actually seven elements which exist in nature as diatomic molecules. They are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So of the 118 discovered elements, seven of them will always come as an element, as a pair, as a diatomic molecule. So we don't have oxygen atoms floating around in the room right now. We have oxygen molecules, which is O2. How many of you guys knew that oxygen is O2? Okay. Nitrogen is N2 as well. That's also in the air around us. But all of these elements, this is how they come as elements. Now, I'm talking about them as elements. When they're in a compound, all bets are off. It all depends on the, the compound, okay? But as an element, by themselves, these seven come as molecules, as diatomic molecules. The other 108, or excuse me, 111 um, elements on the periodic table, they're going to be atomic, all right? So basically, you have atomic, which is just atoms, versus elements, which are these seven, which are going to come as molecules, Okay? You need to have all seven of these memorized. Okay. This is one of the few things you actually have to memorize because you need to know them at the drop of a hat that you're talking about a molecule. So when I, in chemistry B, when I say um, iodine, I'm going to go on and on about iodine. You guys are going to have to write the formula and do some stuff with it. I'm not talking about a single atom of iodine. I am talking about I2. Do we follow that? I2. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of go off on that. So you do need to have these seven memorized. So here's a couple of tips and tricks on how to remember them. First off, if you look at a periodic table, which I have a picture of, and you guys have one in your notes, if you color them in on your periodic table, color in all seven of these, you will notice that there are seven of them, and they form the number seven. That's tricky. Okay, six of them form a seven. Hydrogen is the only one that's kind of off in the corner by itself, but these six actually form the number seven on the periodic table, and there are seven of them total. I don't think it was done on purpose. It was not. But it is a convenient way to remember it. Yeah. Just find the seven. Just find the seven. Halogen family, by the way, is a part of that. That's like the line for the seven. And then you've got the, the nitrogen and the oxygen next to it. Okay. So it's the whole halogen family, nitrogen and oxygen, forming that seven. And then you got hydrogen as well. Okay? Here's another way to remember it. This is the way I remember a lot. Okay? I'm going to write the symbol of these elements in a specific order to form a word. A fake word, but it's a word. Okay? So the word I'm going to write, H-O-F-B-R-I-N-C-L. Hofbrinkle. Hofbrinkle. So if you can write the word, this made-up word called Hofbrinkle, you have written the symbols for all seven of them. Okay? Hofbrinkle. Okay? Hofbrinkle. Okay? Just ways to remember these seven. So do you guys think you can remember seven elements? Yeah. Right, I'll talk about, I'll try to see if you guys can remember them tomorrow. So, pop quiz tomorrow. Let's see if you guys remember the seven off the top of your head without your notes. Yeah. <laughs> it won't be great. It'll just be like, let's see who can remember them. Go. <laughs> All right, so these atoms here, they're more stable when bonded. We're going to use the element name as the name of this molecule. So I just call it chlorine or chlorine molecules. I don't go into anything special with naming it. It's just chlorine, the element chlorine. comes with Cl2. So these are elements that are molecules. Next we're going to talk about compounds that are molecules. 
Elements are just one type of atom. Compounds, you have multiple types of atoms. Okay, so naming a compound that's a molecule. Get out of the way here, because people are writing. So, molecular compounds. First off, here's a couple of them. This is not in your notes, but I'll we'll get to the naming in just a second. Um, N2O2, SF2, C3H8, CO2, and CO. These are all molecules. Now, the thing about molecules is we are not writing a ratio like we were doing with ions. Okay, with ions, we had positive and negative in a repeating pattern, and we were writing, okay, we have this many positives compared to this many negatives. Like MgCl2, that means one magnesium for every two chlorines, and it's a repeating pattern of one to two, one to two. Okay? This is different. This, we are writing how many of each element we have in the group. Since this is all about groups, we want the entire group. Okay, so N2O2, this one right here, if that was ionic, it would be wrong to write a ratio of 2 to 2, right? Yep. You wouldn't write 2 to 2, you'd write 1 to 1, because you have equal amounts of nitrogen and oxygen. But that's not what the group is in this case. We want to know what the groups are. So the group is two nitrogens and two oxygens in a group forming that molecule. So with molecules, it's all about the group, not about the ratio. So they're not going to be simplified. Okay, um, and we give them prefixes to tell how many are in there. Ions do not get prefixes, but molecules do. So this first one's called dinitrogen dioxide. What does the di stand for? Two. Two. So two nitrogens, two oxygens is what that's saying. Next one is sulfur difluoride. One sulfur, one sulfur two fluorines. Okay, tricarbon octahydride. Three carbons, eight, Three carbons, eight hydrogens. Do you guys notice I'm changing the ending still, though? Yeah. yeah. Okay, hydrogen becomes hydride. Um, oxygen becomes oxide. Fluorine becomes fluoride. Uh, then we have carbon dioxide, which you guys have probably heard of before. Yep. Carbon, one carbon, two oxygens. And then we also have carbon monoxide. Poisonous. That's poisonous, but that's only one oxygen. Okay, whereas... Carbon dioxide is two. Now notice that these two compounds are made of the same elements. Carbon and oxygen. Carbon and oxygen. So the difference between these two is how many oxygens they have. So it is very important that we're not just writing like how many element, what elements there are. This group is a one carbon, two oxygens, and this is a one carbon, one oxygen group. Okay? So this is all about a prefix system. So it's a system of prefixes. Here are the prefixes. One, mono. Two, die. Three, try. Four, tetra. Tetra. Five, penta. Six, hexa. Like hexagon has six sides. Seven, hepta. Eight, Octa. That one's easy to remember because it's like octopus. has eight legs. Nine, nana. And ten, deca. I love saying nana because it's like sounds like a baby. Nana. Okay. Nana. All right? So these are the prefixes. Please, 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 please. Don't use quad for four. For some reason, four is like the hardest one. Everybody always like switches to quad or something like that. No, it's tetra. How many of you guys play Tetris? You know why Tetris is called Tetris? Why? Because every shape in Tetris is made of four blocks. Not the five blocks. Nope, there's a, there's every shape in Tetris is made of four blocks. There's a five. Yeah. No, So when naming molecular compounds, binary molecular compounds, first off. Double check that it actually is a molecule. It needs to be entirely non-metals to be a molecule. Hydrogen is a non-metal, by the way. Okay? 
So check and make sure that it actually is a molecule. If it's a metal and a non-metal, it is ionic. So you've got to go with the ionic rules, which are no prefixes. Okay? Then, write the first name of the element, the entire first name. Then write the second element, change the ending to I-D-E. So the last element's going to end in I-D-E, just like we were doing with ionic compounds. Um, and then you add prefixes to indicate how many atoms there are in the molecule, in that group, which we just went over. Now, mono. Mono. I'm going to go back to the previous slide here. Mono. I want you to put a little asterisk next to mono. Look at that whiteboard. Mono is only used on the last element. Period. So you got like carbon monoxide. There are actually one carbon, one oxygen in carbon monoxide, right? Yeah. One carbon, one oxygen. Let me go back to that example. One carbon, one oxygen. So why isn't it monocarbon monoxide? Because it's kind of annoying. We've got to stick saying mono all the time because a lot of them are one thing and then a bunch of things. So mono is only used on the last one, period. We just write the write it without mono for, for the first one. Okay? On where? Three elements? Still only on the last one. Okay? Still only on the last one. I'm not. Right? So let's try a few. First one I want you guys to try. N two O. I want you to see if you can name that. N Two, O, oh, go. Ready? N, two, O. We'll see who, how many of you guys get it right. Dinitrogen monoxide. Dinitrogen monoxide. How many of you guys got it right? Raise your hands. Okay? Dinitrogen monoxide. Now, um, a long time ago, guys, most substances were discovered before we knew about molecules. Like, we've known about materials for thousands of years. So, a lot of these things had names before we named them after their molecular formula. So, sometimes you do have common names that people will use. Dinitrogen monoxide is more commonly known as laughing gas. Okay? Laughing gas. So let's try the next one. NH3. What would NH3 be called? Hold on. So NH3. Ready? Nitrogen trihydride. Nitrogen trihydride. Who's got this one? Sweet. Um, anyone think they know what this one is more commonly called? This is actually ammonia. You got it. Okay? Ammonia, which we've known about for a very long time. Okay? Last one. Take a moment here. CH4. Ready? CH4. Carbon tetrahydride. Carbon tetrahydride. Who got this one? Okay, and this is more commonly known as methane or natural gas sometimes. Okay, methane or natural gas. All right, let's talk about drawing Lewis dot structures. Okay, um, I have the instructions next in your notes. I want you guys to just skip them for a second. We'll come back to them um, because I want to show you with an example. So go to the first example on the next page. Okay, the example I'm going to do, guys, is water, yeah. H2O, all right? So H2O, we have oxygen, which has six valence electrons, and hydrogen, which has one valence electron. So the first step you're going to do is figure out how many valence electrons you actually have in each element. 
We'll get to the octet rule, rule of eight, in just a second. I'm skipping that for now. I want to use an example. Um, because I, I oriented it to the side. You're right, it's not on top. I oriented it to the side so that it would line up here in a second. Because what happens is, is the oxygen tries to steal hydrogen's electron. Hydrogen tries to steal an electron from oxygen. And instead of stealing them, they end up sharing the electrons they're stealing. Okay? So what happens here is, this hydrogen bonds with that oxygen there, where there's a spot. And this hydrogen bonds with that oxygen there where there's a spot. So it gets moved closer. And now they're actually sharing two electrons. So do you just move the balance Yes. So you kind of want to move it to where it fits in, where there's that empty place, if you will, the empty unpaired electron. So then it doesn't matter if it's in the Right, right. So we're going we're gonna to be moving things around from the right as a normal atom because when they bond, they're kind of, they get kind of shifted around. Okay? So I want everybody to go back to the previous page now. So on the previous page, the octet rule or the rule of eight... Uh, this is the tendency of an atom to either gain, lose, or share electrons in order to have a full valence shell. It's called the octet rule, or the rule of eight, because most elements will try to get eight. A full valence electron shell is going to be eight valence electrons. In this case, guys, look at the Lewis stock structure of oxygen I have up here. I have eight electrons around oxygen. So... Oxygen currently has eight electrons going around it in its outer shell. Two of those electrons are being shared with one of the hydrogens, and two of them are being shared with the other hydrogen. So we do have some overlapping of the electrons, but oxygen has eight going around it because it's sharing some. And it didn't actually gain anything, so it's not negatively charged. Okay? Hydrogen has two going around it. The octet rule, hydrogen is an exception. Hydrogen only has one energy level, so it is only going to fill that one, which only has two. So hydrogen is the exception to the octet rule. So you're only ever going to get two around hydrogen. And then hydrogen's happy. It's got a full energy level. But that's pretty much the only one, because everything else is in the second energy level or above, which will have to have eight. Okay? So hydrogen is the only one that gets two. Everything else is going to be eight around it. Hydrogen is an exception, is what I'm saying. Everything else is... Hydrogen is the exception for, like, everything, okay? Uh, so how to draw these Lewis dot structures. Step one. You guys are going to count valence electrons for each atom, okay? Each atom in the molecule. Add them together for a total. Guys, please stop talking. I'm walking through how to do this. Thank you. Count the valence electrons for all the atoms in the molecule and add them together so you know how many dots to draw. Okay? Um, draw the central atom with its valence electrons. Now, the central atom, guys, is not going to be hydrogen. Period. Hydrogen is never the center of the atom. Most molecules, you have one atom in the center with other ones bonded around it. So... Hydrogen, not going to be a central atom. Um, if you have more than just hydrogen and something else, say PCl3, okay, that doesn't have any hydrogen in it at all, right? So which one's going to be the center? It's going to be the one with the least amount of valence electrons. That's the one that's going to be in the center, okay? So PCl3... Phosphorus has five and chlorine has seven. So phosphorus would be in the center there. All right? Then, after you draw the center one with its valence electrons, you draw the other atoms at the, where the empty spots, those lone individual ones like we did on oxygen for this one. Okay? Um, you draw the other ones, and then you draw their valence electrons. One of them is going to need to be shared with the center. But then you can kind of draw the other ones around them. 
All right, so one has to be shared with the center. Um, and that sharing, that's the bond there. So those two electrons go to both atoms. Um, draw the arrest of valence electrons on around each one, and then double check your work. Make sure that you did not actually put too many electrons on there. Like, if you figure out you should have 10 electrons in the beginning, when you're done, double check that you only drew 10 dots. The biggest mistake is people will draw way too many dots. I'll be looking at it and like, this has 5, and this has... 6, and this has 5, that adds up to 16. Why'd you do 23? Like, <laughs> so make sure you're double-checking that you don't have more electrons drawn than what you should have. Okay? Questions? All right, let me give you guys another example. Go back to the examples, please. Okay, um, I'm going to do CH4, okay? CH4. How many valence electrons does carbon have? Four. Four. Carbon's got four valence electrons. Okay, how many valence electrons does hydrogen have? One. One valence electron. But there are four of them, so let's just times that by four. Okay. Everybody follow there? Yep. So total, I'm going to have four plus four, basically, which is eight electrons. Okay, so I can't draw more than eight electrons in my drawing. So I'm going to start with the central atom. Which one's central, carbon or hydrogen? Carbon. 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 Hydrogen is never the center. Okay, so we're going to start with carbon. And we're going to draw four electrons around it. Now I'm going to spread them out all around it. I know that's not how you're supposed to do it, but I'll explain more on that tomorrow. Okay? So I'm going to draw one, two, three, four valence electrons. No more than four. Okay? Then I'm going to draw the hydrogens. I'm going to draw one here, attached to where it's got a little lone pair. Um, and I'm going to draw hydrogen's one valence electron to be shared with that carbon. Okay? Hydrogen now has two. No more electrons around that hydrogen. Hydrogen only ever gets two. Oops. I'm going to draw another hydrogen down here. And it's one electron right here, sharing with that carbon. I'm draw another hydrogen here, and it shares its one electron there. And then another hydrogen here, and it shares its one electron there. So, I have a total of eight electrons. Exactly what I'm supposed to, right? Mm -hmm. How many electrons are now around carbon? Eight. eight. So it follows the octet rule, right? Mm -hmm. oh, electrons. Okay. Yeah, dots. There's eight electrons now around carbon. Four of which are from carbon, but the other four came from the four hydrogens. It's sharing them with those other hydrogens. Okay? So when you're counting, um, counting electrons, guys, electrons count for more than one atom. Okay? So, kind of get in here. These electrons here, the black one and the gray one, they count for both this hydrogen and this carbon here. Okay? So they count twice when you're counting, counting how many are around there. So it's two around hydrogen, eight around carbon, two around this hydrogen, two around this hydrogen, two around this hydrogen. Okay? So that can get kind of confusing because you're counting them more than once, but that's what the sharing means. They're sharing. Okay? So questions? All right, you guys ready to try one? I want you guys to try NH3, please. Okay, NH3, see if you can give me that one. Okay, how many valence electrons does nitrogen have? 
going to form a negative 3 charge when it's an ion, but it's not 3. 5. Okay, it has 5 valence electrons. Hydrogen has 1, and there are 3 of them. Okay, so 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 8 total. Okay, 8 valence electrons total. Let's start with the center. What's the center? Nitrogen. nitrogen. Okay, so nitrogen is going to be in my center. Nitrogen with five valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five. And then hydrogen at each of those single lone electrons. Because you want to pair it up, it's going to share those with the uh, hydrogens. So one hydrogen here and its electron, and it's going to share those two electrons between nitrogen and hydrogen. And then one here, and there's electron. And then one here, oops, that's a bad H. And it's one electron. Okay? I've only drawn eight electrons total, right? No extra, no missing, eight electrons total. Nitrogen now has eight going around it. Each hydrogen has two going around it. The eight going around it, that's the octet rule. Yes? Does it matter where the eight is going around? Nope. As long as it's three of the four sides. I usually draw them left, right, and bottom. So. I did like bottom right and bottom left. That kind of like. So you got like one on top? Yeah, one yeah. on top and like two on Yeah, cool. That's fine. Molecules can move around. I mean, flip around in space. So, all right, I'm going to give you guys one more. NH4 with a plus one charge. Okay, this is a polyatomic ion. This is actually ammonia, or excuse me, ammonium. It's one of the polyatomic ions we've been dealing with. This is a molecule, correct? Yeah. I think we've been talking about this for a couple days. So, molecule, yes, molecule. Now, when doing this, though, we have a charge. What does that charge mean? Positive one means one less electron. What would a negative charge mean? One extra electron, right? Or t negative two would be two extra electrons. So when counting up electrons here, we've actually got to subtract an electron. So my nitrogen has five. Each of my hydrogens has one, and there are four of them. And then subtract the one electron for the charge. Okay, that is because of this positive one up there. It's lost an electron somewhere. So that is a total of 5 plus 4 minus 1, 8 electrons total. Okay, it's basically going to look very similar to what we just drew. But... Not quite the same, okay, because we got four hydrogens this time. Okay, so if I draw this again, I'm going to do nitrogen, and this time I'm only going to draw four electrons around it because I'm going to take it off of the nitrogen. That's going to make the most sense. Usually, guys, when you add or take away, it's easiest to just take them off the center, okay, because then it kind of affects where you're putting things. So I'm going to draw four valence electrons around the nitrogen here, and that's it, not five. Okay, then I'm going to draw my hydrogens, one hydrogen here, one hydrogen here, one hydrogen here, and then another hydrogen here. There's four hydrogens in this molecule, not three. Okay, and this whole thing, because it's missing an electron, has a positive one charge. So that's how you deal with one, something with a charge. All right, we'll do a couple more practice with those tomorrow, but I just want to show you guys what a charge would look like, a charge molecule, okay?